Welcome back. Um, we are now in episode two of Made to Measure, so we are about ready to um, do refer our first fitting with uh, with Amy here with her suit, and then beyond that, we'll do the bling. But before we get into the suit and all that kind of stuff, we wanted to go over a little bit more that has to do with your presentation on stage. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, hair and makeup, and a little bit about tanning. Um, not a whole lot because we could do a whole video on just the smoky eye right. alone. So, um, so I'm just going to let Amy ask a few questions that she has in regards to hair and makeup and uh, answer them as best I can. And, and we'll kind of go from there and hopefully answer a few of the questions that you guys might have when it comes to that sort of thing. So go right ahead. Okay, I guess my first question would be, I, I see some of the girls when they're uh, on stage, they'll have their hair pinned up, they'll have it straight, they'll have it curly. I mean, is there a, one way or another that usually is better or shows better on stage as far as stage hair? I would say it really just depends on you. Um, the biggest thing when it comes to stage hair is that it looks healthy. Um, you don't want it stringy, you don't want it frizzy. Right. Um, you know, if you've got short hair, rock it. If you've got long hair, rock it. Do you want to use extensions? If you like extensions, yes, absolutely, I recommend extensions. Um, you know, go back to the old um, Southern saying, the higher the hair, closer to God, that kind of thing. Absolutely, the bigger the hair, the better. But again, you want it to look healthy and full and thick and, okay. and luxurious, that kind of thing. They're looking for that kind of beauty pageant look, for sure. So whatever you do to it, just make sure that it's, it's not slicked back, it's not right. real tight, it's not real crunchy looking from hairspray. Right. Um, if you do the curls, make them, you know, break them up, make them loose, make them bouncy, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, just again, health is the number one thing when it comes to your hair look okay. on stage. And with the extensions, do I have to come with my own extensions if I'm using the, the professional, or do they usually have the extensions? No, bring your own, yeah. If you've got somebody that's doing your hair, that's great, um, but you definitely want to bring your own. Um, there's plenty of different, you know, pre-made ones that you can purchase. Uh, what I suggest you do is you can actually go to the little beauty stores like Sally Beauty or something like that and they all sell like the real human hair extensions um, and you can actually make your own hair extensions and then that way they're real human hair. Um, they fit your, your fit your hair, fit your head the best that, that they can mm -hmm. because you've made them yourself, that kind of thing. Um, I just take the little clips and I actually sew them into the weft of the hair and then you can clip in the, the hair ex extensions. Um, and I feel like that's the best way to do it. And absolutely get real human hair because mm -hmm. then you can style it, you can wash it, you can do it just like you would your own hair. So it really does make a difference and it blends with your hair better than synthetic wood as well. Okay. So... Uh, and then if we're talking about extensions and makeup, how about the eyelashes? Is that something that I have to bring my own false eyelashes or will the, if I'm using the professional stylist, will she have her own? Or? That one depends. Sometimes they'll have them, sometimes they won't. Um, that would be something you'd probably want to talk to them ahead of time if you're going okay. to use a professional. Um, if if they don't have them, you know, they've got some great ones that you can buy just at the drugstore nowadays, you know. Um, but again, you can go to those little beauty shops, uh, go to Sephora, go to um, Ulta, go to Sally Beauty, all those places. They all have the really funky, um, fun eyelashes. Um, I wouldn't go with anything that's too thick, anything too clumpy. You still want it to look somewhat natural, uh, but you definitely want them to kind of make your eyes pop on stage. They're, they're a must for stage. Eyelashes are definitely a must. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. All right, and I have absolutely no idea how to put eyelashes on, so I guess I would probably have to rely on the, the professional makeup artist. Yeah, know? absolutely, absolutely. And that's another thing, too. I mean, if you're going to if you're gonna do a show and you don't know a whole lot about makeup, um, the best route to go is to hire the makeup artist. Um, and that the caveat to that is that, that you make sure that you uh, check that makeup artist's references, because... Stage makeup is completely different from everyday makeup. Okay. It's completely different from photo shoot makeup. Um, the one thing that I can say when it comes to stage makeup is you're almost doing the exact opposite of what you do for everything right. else. Um, to give, give you an idea, uh, when you're on stage, you're depleted, you've got your water gone. So most girls, you know, they've got the hollows of their cheeks are coming out. Right. You've got the really sharp uh, lines, the cheekbones, that kind of thing. And that's not a really healthy look. It's kind of a almost a right. sick look. Right. Um, so, you know, when you do your stage makeup, you kind of have to combat that and do the opposite. When okay. Normally when you do your day-to-day -day makeup, you put your bronzer in to make your, cheek, your cheekbones pop. You don't need that when you're dieted <laughs> down. Right. So, um, so when you're doing your stage makeup, it's going to be the, almost the exact opposite of what you do for every day. Right. Okay. So, that makes sense. Um, now, what about uh, other questions, like as far as, like, um, 
colors and things like that. Well, I do. I, do you want to match your suit, or do you want to um, complement it? I mean, what what do you suggest as far as like the eye and the lips and so forth? Don't match your suit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My suit, I think, is red. I'm not going to go with the red shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, you don't want to match your suit. Okay. You want to match you. So if you have blue eyes, you want to make the blue eyes pop. Okay. Um, don't go with really, really bold colors. Um, go with something a little bit more neutral, but just in a deeper palette. Um, what I mean by that is the smoky eye, absolutely do a smoky eye. If you've got the blue eyes, make the smoky eye more of a brown uh, smoky eye and do it a little bit of a darker brown than what you would do f normally from day to day. Um, if you've got the darker eyes, do the black smoky eye. And again, do it really deep and dark. Um, don't use a lot of shimmer. If you're going to use shimmer at all on your eyes, do it underneath your eyebrows and that's it. Because um, what it does is it reflects light, and so okay. you want the, you want the light to be absorbed on your face and not bounce right. off it and make you look like an alien. <laughs> uh, so, um, and the same thing with your lips too. You don't want to go real d real dark red, and you don't want to go real pale nude either. You do nude, and all of a sudden you have no lips. Right. Um, you do red, and all you see is your lips. Okay. So um, when you're doing the stage makeup, you want to go maybe a shade or two darker than what your natural lip tone is, and just fill it in with a nice um, lip gloss that. Kind of thing. So again, that it's just enhancing the natural color that you already have. Um, now when it comes to foundations and things like that, now that's going to be tricky for you too because you want to match your tan and not your normal skin right. tone. So um, when it comes to the foundations for your face, you want to go almost the same shade as your body when it's right. tanned. So you can, you can get away with a shade lighter, maybe two shades lighter, but don't go much lighter than that. Okay. Um, you want to blend it as much as you can. So, you know, there's a lot of different products out there. I do recommend MAC. MAC is just, you know, the best product out there. It is more expensive than most, but it's going to give you the best um, stage coverage for, for anybody. Okay. Um, and then, you know, the same thing with the, with the cheek color and things like that. You want a rosy pink. You want something that's going to bring a bright, healthy glow to your, to your face. Yeah. You don't want to go with anything too deep. You know, stay away from the bronzers on your face. Stay away from mineral makeup. Mineral makeup is like your enemy on stage because minerals are like little flecks on your face. So right. if you ever see girls that their face looks really muddy on stage, it's because they use mineral makeup and the light's bouncing off those minerals all over the place and it makes your makeup look really muddy. Right. So if it says anything about minerals <laughs> in your makeup, don't use it on stage. <laughs> um, uh, that's probably one of the biggest mistakes because everything that is out there nowadays has minerals. In right. It, you know, so you got to really find those things like the MAC that are made to be in front of lights, to be in front of the cameras and flashes and things like that. Um, and then uh, beyond that, questions with... I don't think I have any more hair and makeup questions. Probably just tan, uh, yeah. if you're ready to go to tan. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, with tanning, you know, it's... If you want to get a base tan, you can. I know a lot of people are against that, and I totally understand that too, you know, with the whole skin cancer scare and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of things that you can do prior to getting tan for the stage, um, like just with the vitamins that you take even. Mm -hmm. So if you start taking vitamin E and vitamin D, all those things are going to help bring kind of the natural glow out of your skin mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to help you when it comes to prepping for your, for your tan right. as well. Okay. Um, Buffing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I did I did do a video on tanning it last year and pretty much all of it still rings true. Okay. So, you know, you really do want to start prepping your skin at least two weeks, if not a month out from your show. Okay. Um, you know, using the exfoliants on your skin, making sure you're just making taking care of your skin because that's really what's gonna show up once you do get sprayed or right. or whether you do your own right. your own tan or whatever it may be. Um, the condition of your skin <laughs> is gonna determine how that tan shows up on you on stage too. Okay. So um, and another thing, too, is that depending on your division, your, your tan is going to be different, too. Obviously, with bodybuilding, you want to go as dark as you possibly can. Okay. Um, women's physique, again, you want to go really, really dark. Um, figure, you can get away with maybe a shade lighter than that. Uh, bikini, you can get away with even a shade lighter than that. Um, you know, it just depends on your... And there's my phone. <laughs> So back before that little interruption, um, yeah, so anyway, so back to the tanning aspect, yes, you want to make sure that you're getting your skin prepped for it, you know, two weeks to a month out, um, and it's really not difficult to do, you know, the best thing to do is you use Suave Naturals in the shower with baking soda, that's a great natural exfoliant for you, when you put lotion on after your shower, 
Use lotions that have no oil in them. The oil okay. will, will mess with the pH balance in your skin, so just make sure it's uh, you know alcohol or glycerin based. Mm -hmm. um, Aveeno's got a good one with oatmeal or whatever mm -hmm. that that's that's great for that. Um, and yeah, just take your vitamins. You know, the vitamin D really, really helps. Um, the vitamin E really helps. All that stuff is going to help with the condition of your skin. Um, just be on top of it, you know, just like you would pretty much any of the day. Um, and then when it comes time for the show, like I've said before, absolutely hire the person that's the, that's the professional, but make sure that they know how to do competition tan. Right. If they're just a random, you know, salon tanner, right. do your own. Because <laughs> it's going to look better than what right. they do for you. Um, but if they are professional, absolutely. And, you know, like I always say, I always recommend, like with Sunrays, um, they, so I was gonna say, who yeah, do you recommend? yeah, they're absolutely my favorite. Um, I may be a little biased now because I'm sponsored by them, but I've been with them for the, you know, using them for the last three years. So they just, uh, they just appreciate my, <laughs> my loyalty. Right. Right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, absolutely. It's the best, it's the best color out there. And it's the easiest one to put on by yourself too. They have a mousse that's really, really easy to apply, um, on your own. Uh, it doesn't get all over everything. I don't. I know some of you guys have used Gem Tan and it gets on everything. Um, Liquid Sunrise doesn't do that. Dream Tan gets on everything. Don't use Dream Tan because it's banned in most um, competitions because it gets on everything. Um, uh, yeah, but Liquid Sunrise is the way to go. Okay. Um, Good to know. Other questions? Uh, I guess as far as the tanning goes, what if you do the professional tan? Mm -hmm. um, Typically, you have to be the, at the show the night before because they spray the night before, or is it the day of, or is it? Do you do one tan, two tans, two sprays? It depends on the package you get. Um, now, again, it depends. It depends on the sprayer. I know that, like with Liquid Sunrays, they have a few different options where you can do a one coat and touch ups, and then, or you can do the full competition spray tan kind of thing. And usually, yeah, it's usually the day before, and then the day, the morning before the show as well. And you um, can't get it wet in between. No, <laughs> you're getting wet in between, um, or else if you do get wet, you got to start over and start. Yeah. From scratch, um, which that has happened before because sometimes it rains <laughs> and all of a sudden you got little splatter marks all over you and you've got to just jump in the shower and just take one for the team and redo it. So um, I've had it happen where I've been on stage and I've sweat so much on stage that my whole tanner sweat off, so I had to go and, and redo it for, for finals, yeah. you know, and take a full shower and everything. So you know, you just got to roll the punches when it comes to the tan. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but the good thing is that the following day you look great. Once yes. you take a shower, you got that nice bronze right. glow and you're good to go. <laughs> good. Um, uh, other than that, though, you know, um, it's just it, the best thing you can do for yourself to take the stress off yourself is to put your hands, yourself in the hands of professionals that are doing it. You know, that's why they have somebody there to do your tan. That's why they have somebody there to do your makeup because... Those are just things that add stress onto right. you if you have to do them right. yourself. Um, not saying you can't, because I do it myself a lot. Um, but if you can find somebody that you trust to do it for you, that's the way to go. Um, so I guess that we've gone over that a little bit. Um, we're going to just go right into the fitting. I'm going to grab um, grab her suit, get it on her, and show you what I do in the first fitting. Um, we'll go through some posing and uh, go from there. I'm still five weeks out, so I'm not there yet. I've got <laughs> that's okay. We all know that, that that you don't get the finished product until you're on the stage. <laughs> right. So that's why we're giving you a little teasers because you'll see the difference from you know from now till then. Yes. So we'll be right back. Okay. Okay, we're back. So we're in. Uh, we got her into her suit. This is our first fitting. So I'm basically going to show you what I did um, at this point in order to get her into it, and what we're going to do from here here on out. So you know, the suit was made. You know, like we talked about the last time to kind of accentuate um, her her waist and things like that, not make her too boxy, all that kind of stuff. So what we did is we kind of made these these hip straps longer. And I, when I put it on her today, I put in the pin just to see where, where we wanted to actually attach the, the straps at. So now when she's got her strap up here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come up to that smallest part of her waist that's going to bring her into that V. Um, so when I, now I can take, take her suit and actually put the final seams in there and everything for her as well. Um, with her top, we made it just a little bit longer on the side. So what that's going to do is that's going to push her chest in like she was worried about before. And it's also giving her a nice little V going down into her back, her back strap on the back as well. Um, and it gives her more support with the halter top. And it just kind of brings everything, pushes it together how she needs it to be pushed together. Um, and again, we've got that nice sharp V right coming down to the, to the center area. <laughs> I don't know what else to call that. But it's basically going to give you that illusion of, how, of giving her that, that, um, the smaller waist and the, wide, you know, the wider hips and uh, quads and everything there for her as well. Um, and around back, we've got the same thing. We've got a, uh, you know, a bottom that's going to fit her 
and you can turn to the side a little bit for me. So it's going to fit her, but it's not going to cover her entire glutes up. It's going to give her give her some nice coverage where her glutes are the, are the focus, not the suit. Um, not going to make her look like a diaper back there. Um, but again, not too small where where she's going to feel uncomfortable on stage too. So the next step from here on out is basically I'm just going to finish off all those seams, finish off her back straps, and put on all of her bling and everything like that, and she's going to be good to go with that. Um, do you have any questions about your suit? Is there anything that... that it feels wonderful. Good. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like it's good coverage and can hold me in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it looks great on you. The color looks great. You know, the fit looks great. So I'm really, really happy with it. Um, there's really no adjusting that we need to do other than putting those hip straps together and getting, getting you good to go with the bling. Good. And you're Yay. good. So, um, Bring the bling. Yeah, right. <laughs> so to finish this off, I'm going to actually uh, do some little posing uh, practice with her and everything. Um, you guys are more than welcome to watch. It's going to go in, in fast forward motion because I can't give away all my secrets for free. <laughs> but um, as we've mentioned, you know, presentation is the most important part. You can have an awesome physique, but if you show it wrong, then it's not going to look great. Um, so over the next, you know, a couple minutes here, I'm just going to kind of show her how she's going to, she can um, present her physique to the best of her ability and show off the hard work that she's put in for the last however many months and years, you know? So, um, so thanks so much for coming by. And the next time that you'll see us, She'll be fully blinged, fully tanned, fully hair and makeup, <laughs> and yes. all of that, and Much ready to go on stage. <laughs> yes, and you'll see the whole package put together. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to see to see it all go down. And I'm glad to have you guys here with us too. So enjoy closing practice.